live two hotheads where activism happens another big week on regularradio.com yep hey casey how you doing doing right yourself awesome very very happy indeed I, i'm well i shouldn't say i'm very very happy because i'll be very happy very very happy if the last guest shows up that i'm still waiting on one more person to come in the studio i see i i've been following the chat and i still have no idea what's going on so i'm, <laughs> I'm stoked to figure out what's up <laughs> it's gonna be a fun show either way well, we'll see what happens. You never know what's going to happen live. Yep. Two Hotheads, where activism happens live on regularradio.com. We got a, like I said, a big show. As always, we're going to open up with uh, Casey. Not always, but lately, always. Yeah, for the most part. And now always, hopefully. The, ma- the majority of the time. Casey uh, Hoy with the news. Going through different news stories. Her and I discussing uh, different news stories until uh, the other co-host, Frank Capone, shows up from his job. And uh, we also have some people in the studio, too. We got uh, Matt Tomar behind the board. Hello. One of the big dogs at Unregular Radio. He's, uh, uh, what are you, what, what's your title now? You have, a, you have an official uh, title. I've had the uh, same title for quite a few years now. What? I'm the, uh, the production manager here. Yeah, but it barely yeah. means something now because you can see uh, the direction the station's been taking lately. It's... Uh, you know, it takes a while for people to notice sometimes, and I've noticed it. So uh, I'm happy to have you here, Matt. Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. My yeah. my can. Are we doing my can on the show? Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. I didn't want to do the other name. Well, you can say Mike Crawford. Okay. No one knows that name. It's Mike Can. Yeah, I think that's you know what people know. So yeah. I'll use that. People one. like it. I'm I friends with, with both on Facebook. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh yeah we're we're live on unregularradio.com and also in the studio with uh two special guest panelists that are going to be weighing in on uh some politics and news stories we have uh ron i hope i said the last name right pat Nod. close enough for government work oh uh, what it say we're gonna have, you're gonna have to correct me <laughs> can we uh have you type in on the microphone just move your head right in front of that microphone it's pat all right pat Nod. no i'm not you know pat Nod. Pat Nah. Yep. I got it. All right. The, we have a running thing that I screw up every single guest name that comes in. I think we need to like get a jar, and you throw like a quarter in the jar every time it happens, and then eventually we're all going to get lunch. Real real fast. <laughs> we're all going to get lunch. <laughs> you already got lunch like 10 times. Right? It's, uh, so, uh, yeah, we, and uh, if I say her name wrong, I, I'm wondering, because I, I say it like I think two different ways. <laughs> Why don't you say your name for us? Ariel Shearer. Yes, Ariel Shearer. From the Boston Phoenix. Um, She's been doing stunning coverage of the medical cannabis reform and, and what's been happening over the past few months. Um, really in-depth work. It's a, I think the last one you did was a wrap-up on, um, what was it? Uh, it's the industry, the NCIA, and uh, some lobbyists down in D.C. working to legitimize the industry by talking to Washington power brokers in language they understand. Sort of a deviation from the freedom rally type of activism and also uh some other stuff like anonymous movement which i really like yeah i love i follow that all the time even when i'm not covering it so i get a lot of stuff from you just following like uh updates on twitter it's like ariel you know what's going on so it's like uh, awesome for information thank you no thank you guys and uh so yeah we got a big show today and hopefully we we we're waiting on a glp consultant he said he was coming in hmm but I don't know if he's here yet. It's supposed mm-hmm. to be here at 3.30. It's 3.34. We should be hearing from him shortly. We'll Fingers see. crossed. Yeah. So uh, why don't we get into the news and uh, go through... Uh, I know you got a lot of good news stories. I've got some very interesting news stories. And there's one that like caught my eye this morning. And I know it's sensationalist. And I know everybody's going to be like all over this because with social media being what it is, people have a habit of sending pictures of their PPs to different people. They um, do. They do. It's been Where? happening. It's been Not happening a lot world. lately. Not in my world. It's oh my well, God. I mean, at least in terms of like the in the political sphere. Like, I mean, there've been a quite people, a, quite a few dick pics floating around. Do people actually request <laughs> these. Dick I think pics? this is so the first like, time that this has like, happened in Massachusetts. Can I ask this question? Do they request them? Is it like I want to see your? I mean, do, I've never like, like as a open? woman. I've never thrown that out there. I've never <laughs> been like, hey. Prove to me that you have a penis. <laughs> like I thought that. Like I mean, at least my understanding of the situation is when I'm like when I'm going in for the, 
the the contract situation like hey we're gonna get down to business like i will have asserted that the penis exists prior to needing to request a picture via email so who's got his penis out on the internet now uh, allegedly who allegedly. allegedly has his penis on the internet and it's a uh, district of worcester representative john for solo allegedly oh no i think i know that guy isn't he reefa mad I'm not sure, but... <laughs> Maybe you uh, should smoke some weed. Oh, my God. <laughs> according to uh, Michelle McPhee of Craigslist Killer fame, John Frasolo's penis wound up on a state house computer, and uh, there's been some possible inflation of expense reports. So he's currently under an investigation. <laughs> Double whammy. There is. How do, how do you get both right? at the same time? So Someone doesn't like it. According to the state house, and according to Speaker DeLeo... An unnamed, unnamed person is under investigation by the Massachusetts House of Representatives House of Committee Ethics for serious allegations. Which uh, leads me to my request for the panel discussion he's a Democrat. this afternoon. What are serious allegations? Is he a Republican or a Democrat? He's a Democrat. Okay. So, yeah. Well, serious allegations are any that will cause a media uproar, and this will. This, this will. Yeah. If there's nothing... Where was this reported? This was reported via MassLive.com, but oh, yeah. also um, in terms of like saying Michelle that an McPhee. unnamed representative is being is under investigation. That came out of the State House News Service. All right. But uh, specifically, Mass Live has put together all of the pieces in terms of what's been reported, what they've reported, and those pieces come together with John Fursolo allegedly sending his penis into the internet and winding up on a state house. We're going to get a picture of this guy and see how, like, I want to take a look at him and see, is he, like, see how he is he, like, up? you know, like, one of these, like, young Paul Ryan guys, or is he, like, Strom Thurmond? Like, what's <laughs> Just wondering if it's, like, worth a look? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have hand robots in the studio that are currently <laughs> looking for a picture of John Trasolo right now. Yeah. All right. <laughs> hand so, and lap robots, so. so. <laughs> what do we have that's less, uh, <laughs> Less risque. Less, yeah. All right, so um, well, last week we got uh, we, we fought, like I got some feedback from uh, I dropped too many f bombs. I don't want to see his penis. And I, I don't want to see that man's and penis. And I, and I just saw a penis. And we turned off some of our family audience for the oh. kids listening. Well, I, I haven't. I, I, I haven't used this. an anatomically All like right. like. Well, at least it's not f bombs. Bad term. All right. It's it is what it is. All right. And so what do we have? <laughs> what do we have next? <laughs> What do we have next? All right, so a high court, uh, high court in Arizona is divided over voter requirements. Uh, Supreme Court justice, dis justices disagreed Monday over whether states can require would-be voters to provide or to prove to prove they are U.S. citizens before using federal registration system designed to make the signing up, signing up easier. And this is part of the motor voter program that went through in, I believe it was 1993. Arizona and other states have told justices that the precaution is needed to keep illegal immigrants and other non-citizens from voting. I have a real, it, there's a real big disconnect on how you can say, <coughs> excuse me, I have a real big disconnect with how you can say, how, how you can be saying we're accepting and using when we're not registering people, when they have registering people under the federal law. This is according to Justice Sonia Sotomayor of the Arizona Attorney General. So basically, like, there is, in Arizona, they're saying that they need to register voters, prove federal identification in order to allow them to vote, which is not according to the Motor Voter Program. And this is actually coming from four other states of Georgia, Tennessee, um, excuse me, uh, so, there we go, uh, Alabama, Georgia, Kansas, and Tennessee have similar requirements, and 12 other states are coming up with it as well. So, against federal regulations, states are voting to require people to prove citizenship in order to vote. And that's something that's been a trend coming up lately. So It's kind of stupid. It's <laughs> kind of big time stupid. Uh, I mean, I, I always hear this. This is a qu point, a question we had this week. We heard someone say this. Uh, they were so worried about that. Illegals are already voting. There's, there's millions of, with nothing we can do as a Republican, because uh, there are millions of illegals already voting. Yeah. We but should do it for Republican ideals or something like that. It was some crazy thing. It's like, you really think there are millions of illegals voting? I don't. I don't either. I, I don't think that an illegal an illegal citizen is going to walk into a polling. I, I don't with police there. No way. Yeah. I, I think that the, that's the last place. That Especially someone. considering how hard ICE is cracking down in a lot of states. I mean, specifically even here in Massachusetts, like yeah. we're a part of a pilot program that allows for reporting and arresting of illegals. Exactly. And that is allowed in seven other states as well. So I mean, it's I one think of those. It's a joke. It's all about politics. Yep. Republicans don't want. Uh, 
to expand the voting base. That's what that movement's about, and that's why they're losing, because they keep fighting losing battles. Which, according to a report released by the Associated Press this year, um, in 2043, the United States will no longer have a white majority. Uh, we'll actually have a minority majority of 60% to 40%. And um, this is the big thing that's causing like a, a rift among the Republican Party. <coughs> Brad, what about Brad Marston? What's the message, Matt? Uh, he's here. Okay, Brad Marston is in the building. The Republican GOP consultant is here. So uh, we'll get that news. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, the rift, we, we, we're going to get more into this because I think uh, the Republican Party, this is their issue in a lot of ways. How do they, how do they battle this? Yeah, exactly. And according to the AP's report, the numbers are already demonstrating that uh, being white is fading as a test of Americanness. Um, more U.S. babies now being born in minorities than whites, which is a milestone we reached last year. More than 45% of students in kindergarten through 12th grade are minorities. Uh, the Census Bureau projects that in five years the number of non-white children will, surpa will surpass 50%. The District of Columbia, Hawaii, California, New Mexico, and Texas have minority populations greater than 50%. By 2020, eight, eight more states are projected to join that list. That's Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Maryland, Mississippi, Nevada, New Jersey, and New York. So, I mean, it's, it's, like, already on the rise where, like, it's no longer a white America. So we need to start, as concerned citizens, thinking on that level, considering that more than 50% of these minorities are at a poverty level. So, I mean, it isn't about politics anymore. Like, this is about people, and this is about people being affected by policy, considering that the majority is now going to be below the poverty level by 2043. Like, more than 50% of Americans will be below the poverty level. Maybe before that. Possibly before <laughs> that, but the projection, according to these numbers, is saying by 2043. Yeah. So, uh, what, what other stories do you got there? <laughs> now that we're really depressed, right? <laughs> what about the tea? I want to hear about the tea, because this is really pissing me off lately. Yeah, so according to... We know what's coming. So, some action that actually happened, some uh, stuff that went down at the State House this week on Tuesday was there is a gathering of blind activists. They actually braved the storm to lobby for services. While state government operated at half speed Tuesday because of late winter storm, a group of blind people and their advocates took to Beacon Hill to advocate for more funding for Braille libraries, special education, and transportation. Uh, the list of talking points noted that while ridership has increased through the MBTA system despite last year's fare hikes, paratransit ridership has declined 16.2%, which is more than the MBTA, MBTA forecast. So, I mean, they're not making any new concessions for folks coming in. And then, uh, <coughs> without aid from the state, MBTA chief is leaning more towards more fare hikes, and this is according to the State House News Service. It's actually really funny because the day after this, a really fun funny memo came out, but uncertain about the legislature's timetable and preference for addressing the state's long-term transit funding financing needs, the MBTA general manager, Beverly Scott, is leaning towards a budget solution reliant more heavily on increased fare revenue to close this one point, or $117 million budget gap. The next day... They released a memo saying, uh, while there's no consensus on other MBTA bailout from Beacon Hill, the new head of the transit agency has recommended passage of a budget that relies on one. A day after cautioning that an infusion of state funds is by no means certain, MBTA General Manager Beverly Scott, in a letter to the Mass DOT, on Wednesday recommended a passage of a budget due next month that leaves a placeholder for an unspecified amount of new state finances. $100 million they don't have. Yeah. And then the, and the she's saying, like, gonna we're, we're going to have to pass a budget yeah. that has a placeholder for state funds in it. Yeah. With no guarantee from the state house that those funds are coming. Yep. Unbelievable. And the feds spend money searching people. Well, why, why don't they just give the money to the T so we can operate a service while raising? I mean, how much are they going to? What happens when it's five, ten dollars a ride? Because that's not what those funds were earmarked for. Yeah. Those phones were earmarked to hassle people. I know. Not to make it cheaper to ride the it's train. It's unbelievable. The infrastructure of this country is just falling apart. All the, all the wasted money. and, and w If they make the trains cheaper, the terrorists win. I know. We've been lucky for a while. I, I think that, I swear to, I mean, think about five, imagine if it's five to ten dollars every I mean, that's what, it, in D.C., to go four or five stops, it's four dollars. You know. know what I mean? It's basically a buck a stop going into the city. Yep. I mean, anywhere, it's, it, I mean, Baltimore, it's pretty, it's not, it's, it's actually pretty cheap in Baltimore. They man manage to keep it cost effective, but then most of their workforce relies on public transportation. Yep. I mean, that's coming. This is coming. You know, it's, it's just look at the cigarettes now. 
Yeah. They're, they're going to raise cigarette the cigarette tax. Cigarette tax going up again. another dollar. I know. I mean, it's it's funny that cigarettes are almost like as expensive as the the most expensive uh, black and popular black market substance, cannabis. Very nearly. You know? Very nearly. Because, well, actually, if you buy a loose leaf tobacco, it's significantly cheaper because yeah. you can get an ounce of loose leaf tobacco for about six bucks. Yeah. And that is significantly less than yeah. an ounce of oh, absolutely. cannabis. But with the tax on like a regular pack of cigarettes now, it's just getting... Yeah, it's, it's getting it's up getting, there. And the, the tax is higher than the cost of this, you know, tobacco. Um, so uh, On a happy are, note, I do have one last thing to close right, on. Let's, let's and this is a list of the cannabis rallies that are going to be going on this spring. Um, we have, of course, everybody knows Extravaganza in yes. Amherst, which is, happens on 420, runs noon to 6 p.m., uh, Hemp Fest um, is an SSBD, SSDP production in the quad of the University of Rhode Island. It runs during the afternoons in Kingston. Uh, from 3.30 to 5.30, the New Hampshire Teapot Rally is organizing a protest on the State House in Concord, New Hampshire. Uh, the past three events have been pretty crazy. Keep an eye out on their website um, well, and keep those big, things going. There's a big trial going on in New Hampshire, too, with yep. Rich Paul. Exactly. Hopefully he wins his trial. Uh, two weeks no. later, May 4th and 5th is a weekend with hundreds of marches and rallies all around the world under the rubric of the Global Marijuana March. Um, there's one happening in Connecticut. There's one in New York as well. Um, if you go to the Daily Chronic, there's actually a full list of these events. And we also uh, have an event going on Tuesday. I believe it's April 9th. I need to check it out. I'm looking it up right now if I can. It's a uh, third annual Suffolk University Normal Cannabis Curriculum um, and Hemposium, and uh, a bunch of speakers going to be there. It's Tuesday, April 9th, 6 to 9 p.m. You can find it on Facebook. Yep. And uh, we're also doing a big uh, a big show on, on 420. The, I thought it was the 23rd. No, no, here. Oh, that's right. La- we're, Saturday is on 420 this year, so we, we, well, I don't know what the heck we're doing yet, but we'll figure it well, out. Well, noon, noon we got to go to Mount Mary Jane. Well, um, yeah, but I'm wondering about 420, at 420, during our show. <laughs> Take a long break. Are we are we going to break our rules and get in trouble and get smoke in the uh, studio? I think we should take an extended music break. This the DL's coming in. I think what I might do is have everyone go in the other room and phone in and like torture me. Everyone else is smoking, celebrating 420, and me and Tomar are in here like Wait a minute. running the show. And <laughs> I'm probably going to have to take that down. Oh yes, <laughs> just, <you know. laughs> no, it's just me. It's just me. Right? We're a little busy. Everyone right? else gets to smoke, but me. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure it out. But we're going to have a big show that day, definitely. And oh, oh also, um, yeah, our, our event that you mentioned, April 23rd. Yep. Which is. Uh, it looks like it's going to be crazy. Yeah, the two hotheads rally event extravaganza. Yeah, events. Uh, what do we call Activism Awards. Yes. Uh, Greg Hausch from Anonymous is going to be there. Yep. Um, giving a speech, I believe. Yep, yep. Dexter is going to be Dexter speaking. Dexter is going to be speaking. King He's of Pots is going to be speaking. Yeah. Dan Fishman for uh, U.S. Senate. Yep. Uh, I'm sure Frank Capone is going to have a few oh, words yeah. at a very loud uh, volume. Yep. Myself, well, and and Vermin Supreme, Vermin Supreme for President 2016. Old Boothead himself, yeah. Which means Rob Patillo is going to be there. Yep. And I'm wondering what we're going to do if any guys show up in anonymous masks. Well, I mean, we got to let clubs them in. don't. Well, I, I say that, but what well, about they the have club? to verify. They have to we're verify have to the ID. To, we're going to have to talk to Brighton Music Hall and just hey, they, as they long just, it, we could like put up a curtain where they like pull their mask off to verify their ID, and yeah. then they come back in and drop their I mask think it's back part down. Of the show. I mean, it's twenty. It's twenty-one plus. Yeah. It's a twenty-one plus event. No, it's, I think it's eighteen actually. Is it? I'm pretty sure. Right, music hall does eighteen plus events. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The Lions. Brothers. I had no idea. Live Nation took over that. That's club, right. So, it's Live know. Nation now. It's it's uh we're doing it with a, we yeah we're doing this show with like one of the biggest <laughs> corporations in the world, one of the evilest ones. But hey, uh, we, they got some good local people we like. They do. Right. They so do. We'll work with them, and they like us two hotheads. They know what we're doing, so. We got friends. Yep. So, uh, yeah, we should probably take a break, huh? Yeah, there's actually... Actually, you got more stories? There's one oh, last event. Rallies, rallies. Um, ACLU client Eddie Windsor's challenge to DOMA goes before U.S. Supreme Court on Wednesday, March 27th. What is that all about? What is DOMA? Um, Eddie is fighting to overturn the defense of, quote, defense wiggly fingers, ironic, uh, of Marriage Act, but in truth, it's people like Eddie Windsor working to ensure fairness and end discrimination who are the real defenders of marriage. Join us on Tuesday, March 26th at 3 p.m. in Boston City Hall Plaza to show your support for Eddie... Uh, and the freedom to marry. Uh, the Doma Justice Rally is Tuesday, March 26th, so I'm like, 3 I'm p.m. Not, I'm, I'm, he's for? He's against Doma. 
So I don't know. Sure. He, so he doesn't like gay marriage. He does like gay marriage. The Defense of Marriage Act is against gay marriage. Okay. It's okay. another one of those bills that sounds good but isn't good. Okay. So what? Uh, when's this rally? Uh, it is Tuesday, March twenty sixth at three p.m. Okay. Now I get it. <laughs> and we're going to be gathering between two thirty and three p.m. Uh, look for the ACLU van- banner. Are you going to be there? Um, I th- I'm probably going to go down. You know, I haven't I haven't been down to a, a good shit kicking rally in a minute. And if there's one thing that the LGBT community knows how to do, it's throw a fucking rally. And if the ACLU is involved, it's going to be a good time as well. They're providing signs. They're providing liberty crowns. If anything, I would say get down there and learn about what one. I mean, the first case that the ACLU brought before the uh, Massachusetts court was in 1936. Um, 1972 is where the whole freedom to marry thing has come in. So, I mean, this has been in like work in the works for 40 years, 50 years, uh, longer. So, I mean, it's it's definitely a landmark moment, and I really hope that like something good comes out of it on the 27th. Awesome. That's that's that is good activism right there. Yeah, I think that that's a good thing to end on because it's like the news was a bit rambly today. No, but it wasn't. It was actually right on the mark. I thought everything was quick and good and awesome. But that's what I got. Killing it. What? what, what so um, you, uh, before we let you go. Well, actually, you should stick around. Can you stick around today? Or do I you can stick around. All right, cool. But a uh, couple things I want to ask you. Like, uh, we went after Bruce Tarr. We did. And we... I'm still going after Bruce Tarr. I'm not done yet. <laughs> I'm not done yet. Republican Bruce Tarr. I've got more work to do. And, uh, He's a sneaky bastard. He takes care of his <laughs> constituents. That's love- what it is. Like Everybody in the North Shore and Gloucester is going to be like, Oh my God, Bruce Tarr. He's so great. He's so awesome. He takes care of my fishing rides. Because, I mean, Elizabeth Warren is I like is when doing you call stuff people a like, sneaky bastard, i got to admit. No, it's he's, funny. He, but um, this is a Republican that is in uh, the Mass State Senate. And uh, he he kind of took a picture with Leah Cole and went after her and that kind of created that brouhaha about liberty. Yeah. Um, what do you think about this uh, Dan Winslow, number one, and what do you think about Leah Cole? Le- am I sitting? Leah Cole? Leah Cole. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, it is Leah, not Leah. I mean, I haven't been paying too much attention to Dan Winslow, but Leah, or Leah, or whatever her <laughs> name is, Miss Cole, <laughs> is, Cole is saying the right things. You know what I mean? Like, she's she's got the right buzzwords going on when it comes to, like, working class families, estab- like, reestablishing and reasserting the family values of education, helping your kids after school, like, uh, parents picking up the slack, um, because she wants to live the example that her parents set for her. And that's kind of a big byline for her, is saying, like, I, I am I'm a nursing student, like, she's 24 years old, she's young, she's attractive. I mean, she's got all of the things that like can carry her forward, and would she's you also vote for her though. You're, you're, you would like if you you're not in that primary, but if you were in that primary and you had to choose between her and the Democrat, who would you vote for her at this point? I would probably vote for Cole. You would? Wow. Young blood, I wouldn't man. Surprise, I would honestly, man. Like we Democrat. need, we need young blood. Wow. We need a turnover. Like I mean, if this is one thing that like if there's one thing that the special primary has taught us, it's that like. Young people can't get involved. There's two 19-year-olds running for selectmen yeah. in two in two separate towns in Massachusetts what, right now. Do, what, can you name them? Uh, not off the top right, of my head. Right. But there I have been a lot of young candidates been, lately. I mean, exactly. Jonathan Lawyer was another one. That I mean, ran. even Dan Fishman's Evan young. Evan Greer, yeah. Evan, like, Gre- uh, Evan Greer is running yep. for Wakefield School Committee. And even in uh, in Massachusetts, like right now, we're looking at hiring one of the youngest judges at 43. <laughs> Yep. Like so, I mean, it's like we're looking at really, really young blood coming into the state house and coming into the into the legislature, and this is super important. I said the wrong name, Evan Kenny, Evan Kenny for Wakefield School Committee. Yeah. Just make that so correction. I mean, it's it's one of those things that like I I really think it's it's incredibly important that we see younger assertive people getting involved in politics and even if it's only for one term you know what if you're really good at something and you see a problem get in there fix it get the fuck out <laughs> like and then the next person can come in and fix the next problem like this is like we have a field of specialists in Massachusetts we have so many people involved in technology in software in in medicine in law like we're one of like we're a commonwealth state that can make its own laws by town yeah like i mean you can at, you can fix this state town by town exactly Exactly. Like, so I don't see how anybody can say that they, that they can't m- affect change here. Yep. And it's, I, I really think that having having younger people in the state house is going to be part of that mission, if not 
N- definitely not all of it, but a huge part of it. Yeah. And her lines about fiscal conservancy. Yeah. Like she's very, she's very not frugal, but fiscally responsible. And that's another important thing. Like she's not going to be looking at like big tax hikes in one direction, like our, like the big data budget that's going or the big data tax that's going through or like relying on cigarettes or yeah. relying on forward funding. Like you I know, think that if we'd had somebody in the state house like her two years ago, she would have questioned that. I like, I like her and I pretty much supporting her. But like some of the things that bothered me was what even Frank, I think Frank or maybe Garrett brought up actually Garrett <laughs> on Facebook some of her positions on her website and the same with Bob Headland. Like I like Bob Headland on so many things, but this focus on like EBT cards, like it, it's, it's a, like, it's, it's a buzzword. Like, you know what I mean? Is, you know, is they're going like, to say the same thing about like the, uh, come on. like it's there's like another, hate. it's hating people. Well, I mean, there's another thing going on with welfare waivers right now. Like they're trying to say that you have to prove that you are a single parent, what your income, like you know what I mean, what your current income is. Like, there's all these things that, like, they want people to actually certify and prove so that you don't have people quote falling through the cracks on welfare waivers. Yeah. And yes, that is an issue, but you're stepping over a dollar to get to a dime. Yeah. Exactly. Like, there are bigger issues that exactly. are going on. Like, when exactly. you're cutting the small business bids, like when you're putting trying to push through legislation that cuts through small business bids from five hundred thousand to three million. Yeah. And you're making it so that so that only big business can bid on private contracts yeah. in Massachusetts. Yeah. What does that do for the small yeah. business? What exactly. does that do for our and it's like our what's income the order of importance of things? And that's like one of your top uh, listed issues. That was like bugging the shit out of me. It's like. It should be something that you're talking about, like real friggin' issues, not like some little meaningless thing that's the red meat. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's it's definitely like, but but this is the nature of politics, you know I what mean, I mean? And this is the nature of like us needing to like be the watchdog and get involved in civic engagement and really examine and what's coming out of the state house. And hold them accountable. And that's exactly. what we've been doing. And hold the media accountable. If you exactly. see that the media is not covering what you want them to cover, if you hear something and they're not, it's not being covered, it's not conspiracy theory to blow the whistle and say this isn't being covered. You call your news station, you write a letter to the newspaper, you, you get in touch online, you email, you bug the shit out of them until something gets done. I mean, hell, call the state house news service. Like, they're there for you. It is a privately run organization organization out of the state house to bring information to the people and it's your responsibility to find it all right casey that was a rant let's hear it for casey this week she's lying up <laughs> two hot heads where activism happens 617-606-3700 people are texting me listen to the show you should be calling in call in why don't we take a break and uh we'll come back with all our panelists a co-host, hopefully, and, and we'll get into more of the news stories in your phone calls. Again, 617-606-3700, unregularradio.com, uncensored stream. Two hotheads, we'll be right back. <laughs> 